Oh hi. I uh, I didn't see that. I'm just cleaning my cleaning my desk. Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Now before we get into the news, let me just have my little spiel about how you can help the channel. First and foremost, if you've not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscription button, hit that notification bell so you know when we go live with our videos. And if you want to go that extra step further of supporting the channel, merch now available. Boom, boom. White t-shirts or black t-shirts, they come in every size. So it doesn't matter if you're this big or this big or this big or this big. There'll be a shirt for you out there. So if you want to support the channel, feel free. Best mug I've ever had. No lie. All right? Eight quid. Boom. Buy it. Send us a picture with it. Right, first up, some breaking news from uh, Twitter. Andy Tennant is in big trouble. Right, board of looking at reviews. We need a new tumble dryer suggestions. It my field as OBS reviews on site crap as I only review something when it not good. Looking at Melee, Bosch, etc., and cheap ones. Just we're not, that actually works and doesn't shrink everything in sight. Right, I'll be honest, Andy. It's a good job you can bloody ride a bike because your grammar is appalling. Right, now's about the time to run an ad for Grammarly. The, on the only thing I can think to do right now in this situation is to, um, is to message Andy. You know me as, as an investigative journalist. I endeavour to make sure we get to the bottom of every single story, which I'm going to do right now. Andy, hi, Chris from Chris Pritchard's Cycling News here. I just want to know, um, what's the situation with your tumble dryer currently? Have you, uh, have you made a decision? Have you actually bought one? Um, or are you still looking for recommendations? If you are looking for recommendations, I suggest White Knight. Please give us a response to this video. We are dying and the public are dying to know exactly what decision you made when it came to your tumble dryer. I guess we should talk about the World Championships in Yorkshire. A few weeks ago now, there was a bridge absolutely destroyed by a deluge of, of horrendous weather that hit North Yorkshire. And the Brit, I mean, check this picture out. That's Grinton Moor Bridge that you see there. And it was on the Men's World Championship Road Race course. It was completely damaged, as you can see. There was a surge of water just absolutely demolished the stone structure around that bridge. North Yorkshire County Council have said that they're going to put a temporary bridge in place to make sure that the original routing of the men's road race will go ahead. A spokesperson for North Yorkshire County Council said, North Yorkshire County Council are working hard to repair the recent damage and we are aiming to retain the race route as previously planned using a temporary bridge. Now, as long as they get that bridge put in place in time for the World Championships, there shouldn't be any issues in terms of rerouting. There is a contingency plan and a reroute if need be. However, like Grinton Moor is, is gonna be a pivotal part of that World Championship. It comes after like 120K into the race. So I think if we were to lose Grinton Moor through a uh, through a diversion, then, then that could really change the dynamic of that race. Now, one rider who won't be taken to the start line are either the Vuelta, the Tour of Britain, or the World Championship road race this year is Domenico Possovivo, who was involved in a road traffic accident on his bike while he was training near Cosenza. La Gazzetta della Sport reported that two days after returning from the tour of Poland, Possovivo was involved in an accident with a Fiat Punto causing fractures to his right arm and his right leg. Barre Merida released a statement after the accident saying, Team Barre Merida rider Domenico Possovivo has been seriously injured in a training accident. The Italian rider was training on the roads around Cosenza when he was involved in a collision with a car. He was immediately taken by ambulance to Anasiata Hospital in Cosenza for treatment. The 36-year-old Italian rider is in intensive care and although stable and conscious, has suffered multiple bone fractures requiring surgery. I know there's nothing you can do about it. Accidents happen. That's, that is what it is. But every time I see it, it just it fills me with dread and puts me off going out on the road. What other professional sport in this world does a person have to take their, their lives into their own hands to go and train, to go and be the best? at whatever sport it is they choose. It's like Manchester United training on a bloody dual carriageway. To do their job to the best of their ability, which is ultimately racing and winning, they have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours training on the roads. When you stop and think about it, it is crazy that a professional athlete has to put themselves in that much danger just to, just to train. As usual, starting to digress a bit too far, but anyway, you, you, you understand my point. Hopefully, Domenico will make a full recovery. We'll see him back on a bike next year. So sticking with the pros, Matty Breschel has announced his retirement from professional cycling due to a struggle he's having with psoriatic... What? Psoriatic... 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 What? 
Psoriatic. Psoriatic. Psoriatic arthritis. He said, it was a big relief to finally take the decision to retire because I was struggling a lot to find good form and the medicine I was taking really knocked me out. I was sleeping for 15 hours a day. It was super tiring, especially for the head. For me, it didn't make sense to have a disease like that and keep on going as a professional bike rider, especially the last two stages of the Giro d'Italia I rode. I was in a lot of pain and I thought to myself, if I have to stop the Giro, I have to stop as a professional bike rider. All right, and we spoke about this story quite a few times last week. Jesper and Victor spoke about it at the weekend. It's the Velo Life Cycling Cafe and the fact that the residents and the local council are trying to put stop to cyclists organising meets, whether they start at the cafe, stop at the cafe, or end at the cafe. Now, we spoke and speculated about who it is that's complaining, why they're complaining. Is it about the noise? Is it about the volume of people? Uh, someone left a comment in the first or second video of, of this Velo Life Cafe story. And someone mentioned that the house behind the Velo Cafe is the owner of what used to be the pub. And that could be where the issue lies, not necessarily the residents around the cafe, but that one in particular resident who potentially, and I fully appreciate this if that, that's the case, especially when you look at the Cycling Weekly story that's running today, you'll see this picture. And that picture changes the whole dynamic of what this story could be about. If it's that one person that's complained, I would do the same. I guess every single person would do the same, whether you are a cyclist or not. You would hate it if there was a congregation of people outside your drive, not allowing you free passage in and out of your house. But now in an update to this story, it appears that the council could be thinking about compromising this whole situation and allowing cyclists to meet once again outside the cafe. Simon Dudley, the leader of the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead Council, is set to meet British Cycling and council officers to resolve this dispute. British Cycling even took to Twitter to say, we look forward to meeting Simon Dudley, leader of the RBWM later this week. We, together with We Are Cycling UK, want to make sure that people on bikes can ride, socialize and visit cafes together, both now and in the future. Big happy smiley emoji, emoji of a cyclist. And that's in response to Simon Dudley's tweet that he put out saying, cycle to the Velo Life Cafe to chat to the fantastic owner Lee. He's got a great setup here for cyclists to enjoy. I'll be meeting with British Cycling and responsible RBWM officers to find a pragmatic compromise to allow this super little business to flourish. Great cake and coffee. Although that's only the first step in actually getting this whole situation resolved, I think Looking at it, again, I'm, I'm looking at it from, from way over here, not having the full spectrum of information, which as a cycling news show, maybe I should, but hey, I don't. But looking at it from over here, right, the compromise shouldn't be that much of an issue if, if that one person is the only one complaining. You can see why it's fully um, reasonable for that person to be complaining about the amount of cyclists that might be congregating outside their drive. If somebody was congregating outside my house day in, day out, on my drive when I wanted to get in and out, I'd soon get annoyed. But it's great to see the, the council leaders taking a stand on this and actually doing something about it and going down to the Vela Life Cafe and seeing firsthand just how good this, like he says, this small business is and obviously he wants it to flourish. It's good for the council, it's good for the locals, it's good to, to create a cycling culture down there and it's only a good thing having a, a cycling cafe down there in my opinion if they can find that compromise everyone is gonna bloody win it's time to end with a little bit of beef light-hearted beef i'll give you that but still beef and I, <laughs> I love it there is beef going down between lawson craddock and phil guyman flow bikes put out this link on twitter and this is phil guyman's response this is offensive and vile at Lawson Craddock. And then Phil responds to his own Twitter. I, I, I'm not too sure if Phil knows how this works because Lawson hasn't, Lawson hasn't come back at this one yet. But anyway, he still says, let's settle this at Hill Climb Worlds. Clearly calling Lawson Craddock out and to take the challenge on and to challenge him at the Hill Climb World Championships. To then Phil Gaiman responds to himself again, saying, I'll beat you worse than the 2018 Tour de France to again, which Lawson didn't respond to, but eventually Phil again tagged himself into his own tweet. Did I go too far? I like Lawson, but I also like trash talk. Eventually Lawson bit, <laughs> simply saying, I don't like you. 
Now, anybody looking at that reply from Lawson Kravitz might think that Phil Gaiman's gone too far. They're clearly just mates, just having a bit of beef online. But who knows where this might go? This might lead to the Lawson Craddock versus Phil Guyman show over on Guyman's channel. But if you want to see the Flow Bites video of Lawson taking back his crown, then the link is down in the description. Good little video. All right, and let's finish off with a bit of guess the gram. Uh, check this one out. Look at these two. I don't really know what's going on here. I presume they're going to be chopping some trees down. Why you do it in white jeans, I never know. But who is this? It's of course the vegan cyclist. Now that the dust has literally settled, update update post after Leadville tonight. Who took part in the Leadville 100 mountain bike race over in Denver? That was, of course, GCN presenter Chris Opie, friend of the show. I like Chris Opie. He's a good lad. He's got some nice legs as well. Who's this? Looks like a crime scene. That is, of course, uh, peddling heroin. And, <laughs> and the final one, this really did make me laugh. Me after first stage. Hashtag Iggy Pop. <laughs> Who's been struggling at the Bink Bank Tour? The rock reference should give it away. It was, of course, Daniel Oss. Thanks for watching, everybody. Another show in the bag. Don't forget, hit that subscription button if you've not done already. Hit that notification bell. If you've enjoyed it, thumbs up. If you've disliked it, thumbs down. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel by buying some merch, then uh, link's down there as well. Until tomorrow.